بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلوات الله وسلامه على نبيه الكريم عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My brothers, my sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so today, inshallah ta'ala, what we're going to do is uh, we're starting up our Friday family program once again, inshallah. And I figured since there's a lot of things going on and a lot of people have been asking a lot of questions and it's been very difficult to, uh, you know, to communicate as well, considering the masajid are not open and we're not meeting in person in the masjid, that uh, we would just do a general open q a session um and so if anyone has any questions about anything of course try to keep them respectful and try to keep them general as well not private matters uh anyone who has anything private then we can discuss that uh outside of the online public platform inshallah ta'ala to begin with um earlier today on uh online we had our friday juma lecture and in that, we were talking about um, the importance of, uh, you know, n not engaging in promoting or doing anything that is wrong. Uh, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا uh, and so I know some people had written some questions out there and I figured we would just do an open online platform uh, Q&A session for today. We'll, you know, keep it at maybe 30 minutes. Uh, we'll go to 45 if needed. Um, and so if anyone has any questions, feel free to type that in there. Also, for those that are on uh, Facebook and YouTube, please feel free to type that in there as well. Um, I notice here some people are asking with reference to sadaqah, is there a specific hadith about it? Uh, yeah, there's lots of hadith uh, with regards to sadaqah. If you simply go to sunnah.com, so there's a website that um, has the major books of hadith translated on there, not uh, you know all of the different books that are out there, but just go to S U N N A H dot com, sunnah.com, and then just type in sadaqah. Right, type in the word sadaqah or charity, and then you'll see many hadith that will pop up there with regards to charity. So that's something uh, for light spread. Uh, light spread. If you have uh, any need to research any questions related to sadaqah, then you could do that as well. You know, you could simply um, you know check that out. Go to go to sunnah.com, and uh, you'll get a list of uh, hadith. You just type in sadaqah. If you have an Arabic keyboard, you can do that as well. Uh, also, you can type in the word charity um, and alms as well, A-L-M-S, and you'll probably get a whole list of different hadith uh, pertaining to sadaqah and charity. Uh, once again, for those of you that are joining us, it's an open Q&A session, so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. I know usually as I'm talking or doing a lecture, a lot of the time people will start asking questions, and I'm not able to answer them on the spot because of what's going on. So. Uh, or, or because, you know, it's a specific topic or, you know, we're trying to fit the, the lecture or the time within a specific amount of time. Um, so, uh, you know, tonight I figured we'd just open it up for an open Q&A. And uh, it seems like whenever we do an open Q&A, people don't really uh, come out to ask their questions. So uh, feel free to ask uh, if there's something that you've been thinking of with regards to Ramadan, with regards to fasting, with regards to um shawal um also with regards to hajj that's coming up or uh you know things related to uh our deen and things like that uh, feel free to ask uh, at this point in time so anyone has any questions uh you could just type that in there anywhere inshallah uh, i know that the attendance is going to be low today on purpose uh, because it's our first time going back and the email was uh lacking the poster so i noticed that the poster was not sent out in the email but inshallah, that uh, that will be done from the weeks moving forward. Uh, Brother Abdul Rashid here, actually, before that, uh, Ghazala says, Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum as salam. Uh, in fact, Ghazala, if you're typing in as salamu alaikum, there's alif and then a lam. So it's alif lam, sin lam alif neem, right? As salam. 
so what you typed there was Aslam. Uh, so Abdul Rashid Tahir says, what is your opinion about hijama at this modern world? Uh, hijama, I'm assuming you mean hijama as in cupping. Uh, so it is something that uh, is found in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, is beneficial. I've, I've had cupping done myself, both uh, wet cupping and dry cupping. So there are two different kinds of cupping. There's cupping where the blood is drawn to the area and then just left in that area and there's a uh, cupping where the blood is drawn to that area and then removed uh, that we see more in the sunnah of the prophet وسلم, and so uh, that is something that i feel uh, is still very beneficial a lot of athletes use it uh, i have uh, you know a sister-in-law who's in sports medicine and uh, you know that's something that that is done still uh, in, in various different uh, areas of, of uh, you know, um, health and, and well-being and so on. Uh, so it is something that uh, I think is encouraged to do. And also there are some hijama clinics that are out there um, that have, you know, uh, studied this and, and learned how to do it properly. And also we travel, those who travel a lot, we are able to get it done in different places as well. Uh, did the winners of the Quran quest get announced? Yes, the winners did get announced, and the so the winners were contacted, and we dropped off all of the uh, gifts. Alhamdulillah, uh, to the top ten um, partic- uh, the top ten winners, and so that was done as well. I see on Instagram here a couple of things were typed in. Let me quickly look here with reference to sadaqah. What is the difference between paying cash versus sadaqah of animal? Example: goat and sheep. As in paying, hmm? what do you mean by sadaqah of animal? Like giving an animal uh, as a sadaqah? Or paying it on behalf? I'm not too sure if you're referring to zakah right now. That's why I'm a little bit hesitant to ask this question. So be a little bit more specific, inshallah. Uh, Queen B says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My question is regarding the salah said at the mosque during this pandemic okay what about it all right scroll down and here's a question is there any islamic ruling or permission from the quran or hadith that says we can pray without standing close together at the masjid okay so with regards to this um we are supposed to be standing close together right islamically we're supposed to be standing close together we're not supposed to leave any gaps for shaitan to come in between us however we look at what is more important as in is it more important to upkeep the congregational prayer? So if we are not going to space ourselves out and we're going to pray all together, if we're going to pray all together, then the prayer can't happen by law. But if we're going to space ourselves out, then the prayer can happen, right? And so what's better, to completely cancel the prayer or to have the prayer but people spaced out? Now, having the spaces between everyone is obviously not what is encouraged within our deen. However, because of the current situation, we are able to, uh, you know, give a uh, leeway to that and allow the prayer to continue to on uh, to continue uh, happening while having people spaced out. Right, so people could be spaced out. Uh, and pray the prayer. Is that the norm? Is that what's encouraged? No, it isn't, right? Uh, But during this pandemic, because we are not allowed to, and we should not stay close together in order to prevent the spread of any, uh, you know, germs or or, uh, virus from one person to another, we are spaced out. So it is not the norm and is not something that should be done regularly. But because of this current situation, that is what is being encouraged. And this is something that we see to be uh, permissible during this time only. And then once things go back to normal, uh, then, uh, you know, we are to pray by closing the gaps and not spacing ourselves out. So we look, we, we basically weigh it, right? The ass is done and we look at uh, whether it is permissible to have the prayer, even though there's an exception made. So this is an exception that's made uh, for the sake of continuing the congregational prayer and having it in those masajid that are able to actually host it. Some places are allowed to and other places are not. Um, Henzi, if you cannot make up missed fasts due to period being on antibiotics and other fasts that maybe we are not accepted, what can one do? If you feel you cannot make them up by fasting, can you give money? 
Okay, so first of all, we're try we are to try and make up those fasts, right? If someone missed a fast, if they're not able to make it up now, let's say maybe right now someone is taking medication and they're not able to fast, but are they able to in six months or will they be able to in six months or seven months or eight months? If that's the case, then the person should make up those fasts when they're able to make them up. If they're not able to, then they have to feed someone for every single day that they missed, okay? Um, we'll move to this Instagram and then we'll come back to Facebook and YouTube, inshallah, okay, uh, for the questions. Let me just quickly go through this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sayyima Ali says, when the answers of the Quran quest will be, oh, when will the answers? Okay, so I think, um, I think they're supposed to start coming out soon. Uh, I will inquire about that, inshallah ta'ala. And uh, you'll start seeing that on the Instagram very soon, inshallah. Can you elaborate white fasting, please? <laughs> it's the white days, ayam al bild, right? And what is meant by that is nothing to do with race. What is meant by that is the moon is full. And so there's a bright glow that's coming from it, right? So it's called ayam al bild, the days when the, when the moon is full and glowing, right? It's glowing bright. Uh, translated, people say the white days, right? Uh, but uh, that's what's what it's referring to. In fact, it's not really days, it's nights, right? The nights are glowing bright, and so th the days are the days that are fasted, okay? Um, we will go to, what's going on here? Did I miss anything? Okay, so we'll go here to Facebook and YouTube. Um, can... So Abdurashid Tahir says, can the aqiqa of a newborn child be done at a later date due to hardship of COVID-19? Uh, yes, it can. Okay, so the aqiqa can be performed later on. It does not necessarily have to be performed within uh, a certain amount of time from the, from the birth of the child. It could be done a year, two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years later. If the family is not able to afford it, it can be uh, pushed off to a later point in time. Uh, but it still can be done at a later point in time. Um, Muhammad Zafar says, My father has passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Can I pray nawafil for him and what else I can do for him? Okay, so here's an interesting question. Can I pray nawafil prayers for him? Pray the nawafil prayers for yourself. Okay, pray them for yourself. Uh, a person is supposed to have prayed supererogatory prayers within their own life. Okay. Uh, the more that you pray, though, because your parents are probably the ones who taught you how to pray. So the more good deeds you do from the things that your parents taught you to do, the more rewards your parents will get as well. So, for example, in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that mentions that the, there are three things that a person takes with them in their grave when they pass away. Um, a sadaqa jariyah, right? Uh, a sadaqa jariyah. Also, uh, what is mentioned is a child that is pious and makes dua for them, or a righteous child that makes dua for them. So making dua for the parents is something that, uh, you know, we take with us in our grave, but also uh, the things that we teach others. So we know that when, when you teach someone something and they do it, you share in the reward of it. Right. So your parents taught you and showed you and guided you towards doing goodness. And so the more you do of the goodness of what your parents taught you, the more they will also benefit from those rewards. So continue to do good that your parents taught you to do. OK. Uh, Kafi says, Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I say, wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sayyid Amir Raza, salam alaikum wa alaikum salam. Hope you had an amazing Eid with social distancing. Alhamdulillah. Really appreciate all ICNA staff and volunteers for doing Eid drive through a success. Um, I wanted to ask if there is a hadith in regards to saying Allahu Akbar before reciting Dua Qunut. Jazakallahu Khair. Okay, so I'm assuming, Sayyid, that you are referring to um, the Witr prayer. Okay, that you're referring to the Witr prayer. Uh, if you are not referring to the Witr prayer and you're just asking about uh, saying Allahu Akbar before uh, Dua Qunut, I don't know. I haven't heard of any. Uh, but if you're referring to the prayer and the prayer that is prayed according to the Hanafi madhab uh, in the way that the Hanafis pray it, uh, you know, to uh, begin the Qunut in that way, 
uh, is from the teachings of what we find in the books of Hadith. Uh, to get the actual specific Hadith for you, I don't have it at this point in time, but inshallah, I'll look uh, for it if you want to message me about it, inshallah. Um, we'll move over to my Instagram and take some questions here. Uh, Light Spread says, Sadaqa, which is better between paying cash versus slaughtering animal as a sadaqa, which is preferable? Okay, so it depends. Right, the best type of sadaqa is a sadaqa that is. Uh, well, we see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions that the best type of sadaqa is a sadaqa that is done to your family, that you give to your family, right? That you spend on your family. We also see that um, um, from the best kinds of sadaqa is a sadaqa that is done in its place, as in, you know, if, if someone is in need of food and you give them a pair of shoes. And you're not really, like, you're not really maximizing from that opportunity of, of giving someone food, what they're actually in need of. Uh, so, you know, when it comes to doing sadaqah or doing khair, doing something good for another, we should look at what they are in need of doing as well. Now, giving cash uh, can, can be used for multiple things, right? Maybe a family is in need of paying their rent. They have food. Maybe they're collecting food from a food bank and uh, they are not receiving enough money to pay for their rent or they're not receiving enough money to pay for transportation or to pay for certain things that they need in their life that is, that is financially linked. Uh, then it may be better for us to give them money instead of food, right? Um, so try to find out what the people in need are actually in need of and try to provide that for them. That is what's preferable, okay? Giving people what they actually need. Uh, another question here from Cameron 13. Cameron 13. Um, it says, so if the missed fasts are not made up within the year and next Ramadan arrives, do we add up the missed fasts or can we pay off last year's missed ones and try to make up the current missed fasts? Okay, so what we need to do is make sure that we try to make up those missed fasts before the next year. If we know that a person is not going to be able to, right, for, for whatever health reason or uh, maybe they're not going to be able to make up those fasts because uh, they're pregnant and then they think maybe next year they'll be breastfeeding, for example example, uh, and it's going to be difficult for them, uh, then they could try to make up those fasts throughout the year because you have 11 months to do so. Uh, and also the days are going to be shorter in the winter months. But if someone is also still not able to or feels like they just absolutely will not be able to, then they should, uh, you know, compensate as in pay out that fidya and uh, feed a person for every day that they missed of fasting, okay, before the next Ramadan comes around. That should always, we should always try to look after um, things before they add up, right? Especially when it comes to Ramadan, uh, you know, the scholars say that if a person doesn't make up the, the fasts that they made, that they missed of the previous year, then they are sinned for those days of fasting that they missed, right? So we try to make up those days of fasting. Um, any questions here? Ooh, safe. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Hope you're doing well, inshaAllah. Uh, any questions here? None here. We'll go back to YouTube. Rashid Farooqi says, Salaamu Alaikum, Shaykh. Wa Alaikum as -salam, Rashid. Hope you're all doing well, inshaAllah. Everyone who says Salaam, Wa Alaikum as -salam. Hope everyone is doing well, and your family is also. Rashid says, are we debt-free now? If not, how much to go, and what are the plans, inshaAllah? Okay. So the masjid is not debt free. We had uh, it was, if I'm not mistaken, close to 1.5 million that needed to be paid off, and uh, we managed to raise throughout the month of Ramadan 233 thousand dollars. Alhamdulillah, that's absolutely amazing. So throughout the month of Ramadan, we managed to raise for the Islamic Community Center of Milton 233 thousand dollars. So that will go towards. Um, a good chunk of that will go towards uh, the payment of uh, the debt that, that remains still. 
Um, I'm not part of the management, so I don't know the exact details uh, as to how much will be spent on that, but the management will let us know when they do make the payments and we always do announce that to the community. So whenever that uh, is done, inshallah, and the updates on how much is, is left of that, we will let you know, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, and I'll let you know once I get the update on that. Um, the other thing is that due to the current situation of COVID-19 uh, and our masajid not being open, uh, it becomes very difficult for us to um, assure that we are going to be financially stable moving forward. And so uh, the management, I'm pretty sure, is uh, you know regulating all expenses and looking after things. For example, you know the heating has been off in the mustard for some time, uh, making sure that the AC is not kicked in and turned on, uh, you know stuff like that, and making sure that the masjid is running as efficiently as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, cutting back on all extra expenses while still maintaining all uh, programs that we're able to maintain and, uh, you know, contribute to the society that we live in or the community that we live in. Um, having said that, uh, in terms of the amount that's left, I will uh, update the entire community when that is given to me in, uh, in detail, inshallah. But so far from what we've received and what I've been told by our chairman, alhamdulillah, is to inform the community that uh, a total for the masjid itself, there was more that was given in terms of sadaqah, there was more that was given in terms of zakah. So the, the total amount that was given uh, in terms of zakah and so on, we don't include that in what's going to the masjid. The zakah part will go separate. Zakat will go separate. Zakat al-Fitr will go separate, right? Uh, remove After removing all of that that was donated, so people who donated Zakat or Zakat al-Fitr, you know, stuff like that, that is separate. That's in addition to the 233,000, but we don't calculate that as going to the masjid because that has a, spe a specific purpose, right? And alhamdulillah, I know that uh, our management here at the Islamic Community Center of Milton in the last few years has been looking after trying to make sure that the zakah money does not get used for our masjid, right? The zakah goes to uh, those in need, alhamdulillah. And any uh, anyone who has any questions about it can always contact the masjid with regards to the details of uh, the finances. Um, where were we? Where were we? Dead free. Okay, so Munib. Is this Munib Siddiqui. Uh, some people claim that interest can be taken in certain circumstances. Is this true? Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that dealing with interest is like waging war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person has waged war with Allah. So those who might say certain things, it might be in a specific circumstance, okay, which requires a fatwa. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best what each person's situation is. But generally speaking, no, it is not permissible to deal with interest, to take it or to pay it, right? To give it or to receive it. Uh, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect every single one of us from being in a situation where we are dealing with interest. Lubna Ahmed says, Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Dawood Bhatt says, Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, Abd Rashid Taylor, uh, sorry, Abd Rashid Tahir. Sorry, I keep saying Taylor because uh, I have a good friend, uh, one of the Imams in Kingston. His name is Abd Rashid Taylor, uh, which is why I keep saying that. But Abd Rashid Tahir uh, says, on summer long days in Canada, after how long? After how long is Isha prayer? Okay, so I think what what Brother Abd Rashid is asking is. Um, how long after Maghrib can we pray the Isha prayer? Um, so what I would say is, look, all, all these calculations have been done, alhamdulillah, just follow the calendar of the, of, of the masjid that you uh, typically frequent. Um, however, the the definition or the, the general rule in the start time for Salat al-Isha, the general rule for the start time for Isha prayer, and our youth know this, we taught this to our uh, youth in the masjid, the Young Muslim Academy youth. The timing for the beginning of Isha prayer is when the sky is has no colors left in it. So that when the sky is black and dark, okay? Um, so when you still see light in the sky and the sun has set, that's Maghrib time. And then you'll still see colors in the sky, right? After that, you'll notice that... Uh, So after that, you'll notice that uh, the sky still has some colors in it. It goes purple and so on, and it's still bright. Once all the colors of the sky are gone, 
Okay, Brother Abdul Rashid, once all this, the colors uh, in the sky have gone and all you see there is just darkness and this, the, the moon and the stars, that's technically the beginning of the time of Isha. Okay, um, it can vary from place to place, right? It can vary from place to place. And when we say, when you're asking this question in Canada, it, you know, in northern parts of Canada is very different than in southern parts of Canada because Canada is huge. Okay, so I can't really answer that specifically, but generally what I like to say is follow the calendar of the masjid that you usually frequent. And a general rule here in the GTA is approximately 100 and, uh, is approximately 90 minutes, right? An hour and a half, an hour and 30 minutes. That's a general rule. But uh, once again, um, you know, we, we do uh, suggest that... Um, you follow the the calendar or the timings that your local masjid has set for your community. We'll go back here to Instagram and see if there's any questions here. Instagram, Instagram, none on the masjid account. Okay, alhamdulillah. Uh, we'll go back to my Instagram. Oh, let's see. Uh, I didn't know about the sins from adding up for missed fasts. In this case, can one pay altogether, etc.? Okay, so again, if someone missed fasts of previous years and they're able to make up those days of fasting, then they should. Okay, uh, Henzi, so if you're able to make up those fasts and you didn't know about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't hold us accountable for things that we didn't know. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon us. However, uh, try to make up those fasts. If you can't, then try to uh, expiate. Uh, try to do something, as as we mentioned before, that will, uh, you know, uh, remove that uh, burden of fasting. Um, M. Rizwan 2, or M. Rizwan squared, says, Salaamu Alaikum, Wa Alaikum Salaam. If someone's husband has passed away, and she is the provider of the family, and has to work, does she need to complete the idda period at home? Okay, I'm going to read that again because it's moving. If someone's husband has passed away, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for whoever it is uh, that has lost their husband. I mean, and she is the provider of the family and has to work. Does she need to complete the idda period at home? Okay, idda. What is idda? This is a big question. A lot of people ask this question. What is the idda for a woman uh, or how is she supposed to spend it, okay? So if someone's uh, husband passed away and she's a widow, um, then it's four months and 10 days uh, as the time of the idda for that person. Um, and how she is to spend that is to remain at home. However, she's allowed to go out and to look after things that are a necessity for her. So if she needs to go and do groceries or she needs to go to work because she's the sole provider now for her family or she's the one who looks after her family financially, she is allowed and permitted to go to work. The only thing is we are not encouraged to do anything extra. Okay, so our sisters are not encouraged to do anything extra as in go somewhere else, go and chill, you know, spend nights at other people's families, uh, other people's homes or family members' homes and stuff like that. We should stay at our own home. Okay, so if a person needs to go out um, to work or um, to buy groceries or to take their children to school, you know, when the pandemic is over and stuff like that, then they are able to. Uh, to do that, right? That is something that you can do during Idda. You're able to look after things that are a necessity for you. Munazza Ayyub, could you please tell us two rak'ah before Fajr is supposed to be prayed before the Adhan or can we pray after the Adhan? Okay, so the two rak'ah of Sunnah of Fajr should be prayed after the time of Fajr enters. Okay, so for example, uh, the Masjid might call the Adhan 10 minutes or 20 minutes before the salah takes place, but that may be called after the time of Maghrib has already begun. So the sunnah of Fajr should be prayed after the timing of Fajr begins. For example, if you if you pray Fajr at home at um, five o'clock, okay, for example, and the time of Fajr comes in at four o'clock, okay, uh, as an example, um, but as a family, you wake up and you pray at five o'clock because maybe it's easier for your children and so on, you know, to pray at that time. They'll get an extra hour of sleep. 
And so what you end up doing is um, you would be able to pray your Fajr Sunnah from five o'clock, from the timing that Fajr begins. And then you can uh, have the Adhan called afterwards. Now, preferably we call the Adhan first, but uh, there are times when the Adhan is called after the timing has already entered uh, for whatever circumstance or whatever reason. However, the timing of the of the Sunnah prayer should be after the timing of Fajr has already begun. For kids who have to wake up early, is it okay if they pray a shell prayer maybe after an hour of Maghrib, please suggest. Okay, so if the kids are young, children are young, they're not mature yet, and you're training them to pray Fajr and to pray Aisha and to pray their prayers, then yeah, that's something that could be done, praying a little bit earlier and so on. However, if the children are about to reach that age where they are supposed to be praying soon, then I would suggest that they get into the regular routine because eventually they're going to have to do that. So, you know, for example, Fajr don't wake them up like two hours after Fajr and be like, okay, pray now. No, wake them up at Fajr time and get them to pray, okay? Uh, missing all the time spent with al Muyassar from Hajj 2019. Yes, we're all missing that time. Subhanallah. May Allah make it easy. I'm coming back to you, Facebook and YouTube. We're just going to check out what's being said here and then um, scroll, please scroll. Okay. Okay, so if someone is not able to fast, then yes, feed one poor person one meal per day that you miss of fasting, okay? Okay. Um, back here, Facebook and YouTube. Where were we? Okay, we mentioned that, we answered that. Um, Sarwar Saeed says, is it possible that monthly statement of accounts be posted, monthly and audited accounts be posted at the end of the year? Yeah, so uh, the, the statements usually are posted uh, on the bulletin board within the masjid every, um, I think every two months they post them there of, you know, two months. So they do like every two months and post them there every month. Uh, those are always there. And for anyone, like I said, who wants to contact the masjid uh, accountant, uh, for any details, you can do that. Can we combine both Maghrib and Isha so that we have enough sleep time until Fajr? No. Sorry. What you can do, though, is delay Isha. As in, if so there there are two times when praying Salat al-Isha is, uh, you know, permitted or encouraged. For example, um, if someone knows that they are going to wake up in the middle of the night and they're going to pray, right? then uh, they can go to sleep right after Salat al-Maghrib and then wake up a few hours later, pray their Isha, pray a little bit of Tahajjud if they want, right, if they can, and then go back to sleep and then wake up for Fajr. Or stay up until Isha, pray their Isha and go to sleep right away. Okay, so it is preferred that we actually do delay Salat al-Isha or we can delay Salat al-Isha until the middle of the night. Okay, not all the way till Fajr time, but until the middle of the night. So you'd have to wake up in the middle of the night, pray Isha, and then wake up again for Fajr. Okay, um, if I fast in Shawwal, six days because of my cycle, am I able to get the Shawwal? The, the thawab of shawal month, or I have to keep six more days extra. Okay, so there are some scholars that allow you to combine your intention of what you missed in Ramadan and what you're fasting now in shawal. Personally, I don't prefer that, right? And of course, people will say, well, you're not the one who's missing days. No, but I fasted all the days. So the days that I missed when, other, when, when a sister maybe, for example, was eating during Ramadan, you know, when we were fasting, then, you know, uh, we make up those days separately. That's what I usually encourage. And that's what I, I feel uh, should be done, especially for those that uh, maybe missed a few days. However, some of the scholars say that, you know, it is very difficult for someone to uh, make up those days um, and then fast another six days of shawal so they can combine their intentions. If they make intention to do that, we leave it up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah knows best. Is it permissible to eat kosher meat even if halal options are readily available? Yes, it is. Okay, yes, it is. Just make sure that there's nothing in the kosher 
uh, food that is prepared for you that is haram. So you specifically said kosher meat. So if the meat is kosher, is it permissible for us to eat even though there's halal options available? Yes, it is. Right? No one could say that it's haram because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that the food of Ahlul Kitab is halal for us. Right? If I am praying at home with my daughter in Jama'ah, is it necessary to say the adhan at home though I played an adhan prayer clock that I have? Okay. The adhan clock does not take place of the actual adhan. Okay, so the adhan clock that you have or the watch that you have does not take place or even our phones that have the application with the adhan that's called on it, it does not take place of the adhan. You still have to call the adhan in your home or when it's time for salah. Okay, so just because you heard the clock doesn't mean that that you no longer have to call the adhan. That do, it doesn't take place of the actual adhan being called. Um, also, the person is asking, Afif Rahman is asking, if you prayed with your daughter um, in jama'ah, is it necessary to call the adhan at home? Even if you're praying alone, we should call the adhan and the aqama, even if we're all alone, because there are angels who uh, join in, or jinn that also join in, uh, in the in the prayer, right? Those that are believers. And so there are other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need to inform of the time of prayer and to gather in prayer. So even if a person is alone, they should call the adhan as well as the iqama. Um, so Muhammad is saying, thanks, I thought that the Prophet sallallahu did combine both Maghrib and Isha. Yes, he did combine Maghrib and Isha, but that was for specific reasons. For example, traveling. Right When someone is traveling, they are able to combine Maghrib and Isha. If someone is not traveling, uh, then there's there's no exception there. There's no need for the person to be combining those prayers. Right, Unless the person has an absolute need to combine the prayers. Okay, That's a completely different question. If a person does not sleep after Maghrib until Fajr, what is the best time to offer the Isha namaz? Um, so the best time to offer Isha prayers, either as soon as Isha enters, Right, uh, or in the middle of the night. Right, so uh, offering a prayer, praying the prayer on its time or at its time when the time begins is always the best time to pray any of the prayers. Okay, let's go to Instagram. Mm, we answered all of these, I believe. We'll go here, and we've answered everything there. Okay, uh, we'll take one more, inshallah. Maria Hassan says, Salamu alaikum. Um, wa alaikum as -salam. Is it fard or mustahab to call the adhan at home? So it is not fard, but it is mustahab. It is encouraged. Um, and it is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his teachings with the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, with the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, uh, that they call the adhan even if they are alone. Okay? And if someone is going to be praying at home. Uh, we saw that Bilal radiallahu an, uh, sorry, um, Abu Bakr radiallahu an, called the adhan within his home when he was restricted to his home and he made the, the, the courtyard of his home his masjid, right? Uh, and so he was calling out the adhan there and praying the adhan as well. Uh, okay, so we'll suffice with that insha'Allah. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wabarakallahu feekum, and we will keep you posted on upcoming classes and sessions. Uh, Sunday, insha'Allah ta'ala, we will have our um, uh, essential fiqh class uh, at 8 o'clock, insha'Allah. Okay, Sunday evening at 8 o'clock. And we'll do that every single Sunday, insha'Allah ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum, wa sallallahu sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.